it's Michelle and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. Happy Friday. You know, Friday is always my favorite day of the week. It's my pizza and Netflix night. But today in Texas, we are having major thunderstorms and heavy rain warnings. So I apologize if you hear any thunder or lightning. Romeo has been in and out of the room all day. So hopefully he won't be scratching at the door. But we have a lot of Royal Tea to get through today. So sit back and relax, grab yourself a beverage, and let's get into the Royal Daily Tea. So you guys, I just don't understand the dynamic duo out in Montecito. Megan, of course, has been accused of using her, quote, Royal Cipher once again. Now, a lady by the name of Allison Yarrow, who had appeared on a previous episode of Archetypes, shared on social media a special handwritten letter from the Duchess herself with her her fancy calligraphy, and of course, her royal cipher, M with a crown, for Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. Now, I find this kind of weird considering the fact that Allison appeared on the Archetype podcast, which is part of Archwell Foundation. Why didn't she use the Archetype or the Archwell Foundation letterhead, you know, promoting her brand? She is no longer technically a working royal, even though she still uses the title Duchess of Sussex. Why would you use a letterhead from a place that you left three years ago? You know, if I quit a job or if I'm laid off from a job, I'm not going to continue to use an email with the company's name in it. I don't want their merch. I don't want a gift from them. As a matter of fact, I usually get rid of any reminder that I have from a past employer, unless it's a special gift or something that I can use again. But if I have a negative um, experience with a company or with a client, I sure as hell am not going to use anything that I got that's going to remind me of that company. As a matter of fact, I want to burn everything I have associated with that company. So for two people who had to escape the palace via Canada and a private jet from their friend Tyler Perry, Harry, why do they continue to tie themselves consistently to the same firm, organization, institute, and the royal family? Why wouldn't you just drop the titles at the door, just be Harry and Meghan, and go work on your brand, Archwell Foundation? She's always a merchant, you know, the hat that she had when she went to go vote. She was merchant, Archwell Foundation, Archetypes. Why are you using a letterhead for Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, when it's supposedly triggering horrible feelings and mistreatment that you suffered from those people? Why would you continue to call yourself that? And why three years later are you writing a thank you on that letterhead? And that letterhead has nothing to do with the Archetype podcast from which you sent the letter to a lady who was a guest on your show. That makes zero sense. It's like me sending a letter to a client for my freelance business, and I'm using the letterhead from a company that I quit five years ago. They would be like, why are you sending me a thank you on this letterhead? Do you even work for these people? Like, it has nothing to do with your podcast. I mean, why would you do that? Is she trying to be frugal? Is she trying to, you know, take care of the environment? Perhaps they had a couple of boxes that were stored in the basement and they were like, oh, for the environment, let's just reuse this letterhead. I doubt it. Megan is the type of woman who would literally take a private jet to Starbucks if she had the opportunity. This is not a woman who gives two figs about the environment. They take private jets everywhere. They have, you know, a huge house for such a small amount of people. They ride around in Range Rovers. Again, they preach. They just don't do what they preach. So the fact that she's reusing the letterhead is not because they're being frugal or just trying to go through the boxes. She's like holding on to something she walked away from three years ago. Again, it makes no sense. So in a way, it kind of disproves her treatment that she really did receive. Now, I've had a company before where I've, I've found boxes of old uh, marketing material, and it's very expensive, and it's hard to throw away because I paid for that. I worked for that. It's like a stab in my heart and a reminder of my failure. But Megan didn't pay for that stationery. It was given to her. She didn't work for it. So why would you keep it 
if you had such a negative memory associated with that logo. Honey, I would be burning that crap in the fireplace. You want to get, get some good use out of that paper? Turn into kindling. You know what I'm saying? Recycle. But why are you sending out to people who are a guest on your podcast? Your podcast has nothing to do with the royal family. It's just bizarre. Three years after you escaped this horrible institution and the racism and the mistreatment, you're still walking around with the title and you're still using the royal cipher when you're not doing royal work. And instead, you should be promoting your new brand. We saw when she uh, had that photograph telling people to vote, she was merchant. Yes, that is the proper way to do it. You merch your current brand. So why wouldn't she put on the archetype letterhead? That makes no sense to me. Anyways, that just kind of proves my point that Meg Z, the woman who doesn't care for titles, really does care for titles. So another story has come out. Sting, Harry and Meghan have made the top of the 2022 kind list for Hello Magazine. Now, we all know Hello Magazine is like the master of positive press pieces for all. They never ever report anything negative. I get it. It's good to have those those publications that's just equally kind to everyone. But seriously, Meghan Markle has the number one spot under Trail Blazer. Are you serious? And in the royal category, brace yourself, the Duke of Sussex is number one. And they have the queen at the bottom. So you're trying to tell me the woman who dedicated 70 years of her life and who just passed two months ago can't even get on the top of the royal kind list that you're going to put the Duke of Sussex, who's not even a working royal, at the top of the royal category? Are you on crack? Who paid you? Who? Someone got paid somewhere. That to me is such a slap in the face to the hardworking people like everybody else. <laughs> on that list. I don't understand why Meghan Markle is considered a trailblazer. What the hell has she done? What has she done besides give a couple of speeches where she's referred to herself more than the actual cause that she was speaking about? What has she done besides wearing a t-shirt to support uh, you know, the freedom of Iranian women, which I, I believe we all should. But again, she wore a t-shirt and she posed with some photographs from people from her staff, okay? Does that make her a trailblazer? No. What the hell has she done? Does she reinvent the wheel? No. She's given a couple of speeches where she was paid heavily to appear. It wasn't like she did it out of the goodness of her heart because she's such a kind person. The woman was getting footage for her docu-series and was getting a paycheck because we all know Megan doesn't do anything unless she's benefiting. So the fact you put her on the top of the kind list under Trailblazer is shocking. And Harry as the top royal, what? And the fact that Harry, the Duke of Sussex, you're putting at the top of the royal list, who's not even a working royal above Her Majesty the Queen. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? even above the prince and princess of Wales, even above Princess Anne, who's not even on the list. What? And above the queen consort and King Charles. I mean, I'm sorry, but the number one spot should have been Her Majesty the Queen. You don't put the number one royal spot to an ex-working royal. That's embarrassing. So who paid you? Were y'all getting a little broke there? Did someone have to write a little checky check? Something is not right. I, I just don't understand how Meghan and Harry got themselves in the number one spot for each of their categories on the Hello Magazine kind list. It's like, are we being punked? Is it actually April Fool's? Or is it Veterans Day? I'm confused. I'm dumbfounded. I literally just cannot 
understand how Megan would qualify at the top of the trail blazer list because she wore a t-shirt to support the cause in Iran. Like, I, I don't get it. She hasn't done anything real, original, or authentic. She's just a person who jumps on bandwagons. She has not done anything at all to be a trailblazer. She's not a trailblazer, you guys. This is so ridiculous. She's a quitter. If they had a, a category for a professional quitter, her and Harry definitely top of the list. But this is literally insulting that Hello Magazine would list them like that. It's really disgusting. Anyways, so season five of The Crown premiered just the other day. And I have to be honest with you guys, I am watching it. And I have to say, um, it's nothing really shocking. It's not bad. It's not really surprising. They are covering stuff that we already know. There aren't any big bombshells, guys. There's nothing really dramatic so far. I'm in the first six episodes. Now, I will say I've always been a really big fan of The Crown because I go into it knowing this is historical fiction. It's not real. It's kind of like when I watched Victoria on BBC. It is historical fiction, but it's still very enjoyable. It's well done. Now, this season, I have to be honest, the casting is not my favorite. It's hard to picture them as the people they're playing. Um, it's hard for me to get into it. Now, it's nothing against the actors themselves. Imelda Stanton is a phenomenal actress. However, I have a very hard time associating her with Queen Elizabeth II. Dominic West as Prince Charles. You know, he's a phenomenal actor. He was in a show called The Affair, which was amazing. And he's a very good looking guy. However, as Prince Charles, it's it's... It's not as spot on as the season before. I don't know the gentleman's name, but he was a very good Prince Charles. And the guy who's playing Prince Philip, I think Jonathan Price. Again, these are amazing actors, but I'm having a hard time believing they're the characters. It, it doesn't have the crown magic that the first couple of seasons really, really had. Again, I think it's because we're now in more recent times, but it's nothing new. We all know Tampon Gate. We all know about the book, the revenge dress. We know about, let's be honest, the affair. We know about the interviews. So, so far in the first six episodes, I'm underwhelmed. I have to be honest, I'm underwhelmed. It's still enjoyable, but it doesn't have the crown magic that we're used to having. And quite frankly, I don't think it's really portraying the royal family really bad. I'm not like shocked or upset about anything. Of course, I still have four more episodes to go. I personally believe season six is going to be the bad season because that is where they're going to have Diana's funeral. I believe they're already filming for season six. Now, I do have a full breakdown of the first six episodes of The Crown that is going to be coming up probably tomorrow on my other channel. So if you don't know, I have another YouTube channel, Royal Daily Tea History and Fashion. If you want to go over and subscribe to that channel, I'm going to do a full breakdown of The Crown, you know, episode by episode. If you want to get the synopsis and don't plan to watch it, you can go over there and hear about The Crown a little bit more in depth. Now, I will say I have learned a couple of things, but for the most part, we kind of already know this part in history. Again, I still have four episodes to go. I don't think it's really going to be that damaging to the royal family because people already know. There's no secret, right? But uh, again, there's going to be people who are just staunch believers and, oh, I can't watch it. They're horrible. The tabloids have been a lot worse. Harry and Meghan have been a lot worse to the royal family than the crown has ever been. As a matter of fact, one thing I will have to say about the crown that I am enjoying this season is they're making the royal family look human. They're bringing in a human element that a lot of us forget that they are people and that they have sacrificed a lot for duty, for country. And that is kind of highlighted a lot in this season especially with Princess Margaret and Princess Anne, who at this time was separated from her husband and her new romance with her second husband, Timothy Lawrence, is starting. 
So I think she played a huge role in maybe convincing her majesty to let her daughter, you know, find happiness, let her marry the man she wants to marry because, you know, her sister, Princess Margaret, was denied that happiness. So um, it's very interesting. I think it just makes them human. It makes them likable because it shows you their flaws. It shows you they're just like me and you, that they're very human. And that is something the royal family needs. They need to be humanized. People need to understand that they're just like us, but they have a strong sense of duty and purpose, and they do sacrifice a lot in order to uphold the monarchy and traditions. And that's why Her Majesty the Queen was so beloved, because this woman wore the crown. You know, heavy is the head who wears the crown for 70 years, and it was not an easy job. And she probably had a lot of personal sacrifices that she did. And that is why people respected and loved this woman. And that is why Hello Magazine, you're putting the queen at the bottom of the royal list. Are you crazy? Honestly, what is wrong with them? Anyways, let me know what you guys think about Megan still using her letterhead and about Megan and Harry being on the top of the kind list for Hello Magazine. And if you are planning to watch The Crown, leave me all your comments, guys, down below. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. And please be sure to check out my other YouTube channel. Help me get to 1,000 subscribers. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.